Hello, this is Clement, Chief Architect and Co-Founder of Wavefront. I'm here today to talk to you about time series and interpolation. We get these questions quite often from customers about how Wavefront actually deals with interpolation of data. As you know, Wavefront is actually ingesting data at seconds granularity. So most of systems that are reporting said data, unless you're reporting every second, will not actually have data that is completely aligned. You can imagine, for example, in this case, you have time series one and time series two, and this is kind of an extreme example, where they're just reporting data at different intervals, even just you know sometimes it, it's just lost. It's not, it's not actually reporting any data. And if you actually have to do any operation on these two time series together, you have to apply some sort of interpolation or some sort of quantization. And um, so Wavefront uh, does automatic interpolation uh, when you actually use these couples of operations, these couple of operations. So the first kind is if you're combining just two time series via binary uh, operations. So if you're just adding two time series together, for example, time series one and time series two, you have to perform some kind of interpolation in order to be able to successfully add them together without, looking, uh, without the data looking very odd, um, as I will describe later. Also, if you're doing any sort of aggregation operation, the data needs to be interpolated so that you know, when you have just data that with different spacing, you actually can provide you know, what we call the kind of a draped cloth kind of um, uh, visualization out of the aggregated data. Finally, um, if you're doing any sort of um, if uh, arguments, as well as other, um, for example, I could think of in my mind things like Haver's line, for example, if, if you're using uh, that particular operation, um, you would have to be, um, uh, or moving correlation for instance, you would have to do interpolation uh, uh, from the underlying data. So as a rule of thumb, anytime you're operating on two or more time series, Wavefront is doing internal interpolation on the data. Now, you can actually control that interpolation. And in a second, I will tell you more about kind of our line operation as well as our raw aggregation uh, features. But let's look at, look at this particular example. So imagine you are going to sum these time series together. So in, a, in the traditional sense, if they happen to align, you know, obviously you have no problem, right? You could just very easily produce a new data point. Let's say you're doing a, a sum over all of the data. But the problem comes when you're in time series two and the data actually becomes quite gappy. And with Wavefront, the default operation is to interpolate. And what that means is it is actually creating pseudo data points in the underlying stream in order to be able to produce an interpolated result out of the data. So as you could see, we're actually creating quite a bit of information. So what it is actually doing is to create these slices of data so that is always present on all the time series involved. So I mean, the, the drawing is perhaps not the best, but it is producing multiple uh, points so that you could actually create new data points that actually produce a correct sum. Now imagine if you don't do that, because if you don't do that, then what happens is that there are areas in the, in, in, in the aggregation in this case where other time series are not present, so you would see a huge dip um, in, in your aggregated data. Instead, what Wavefront is doing is, is this an automatic interpolation of data, or what we call internally high fidelity combination of data, which enables you to basically see a summed uh, uh, aggregation without having to manually either synchronize the data or grid the data and still have an ability to look at the data as though the data is, is already quantized in some way. So you could control this particular operation, as you can imagine, because it is actually creating quite a number of data points. And so it actually um, uh, could slow down the operation if you're looking at a very long time interval. And actually, Wavefront automatically performs a line, uh, alignment of the underlying data if you're actually doing a very large aggregation, for instance. So the align function, what it's doing, it's actually taking the data and it's summarizing them. So imagine you have a window of size, you know, let's say it's three seconds, what, some, what alignment is doing, it's taking all of those data points and creating one new data point in that grid. Similarly, for this particular block of data, it's going to take all of that and create one data point. 
And so this basically allows the aggregation then just to perform the operation on the uh, aggregated or the aligned data point to produce the actual summed um, data for that, uh, for that particular time slice. So a line actually lets you also control what is the actual summarization logic. So the default is to use mean, but you could very much uh, use min, max, median, as well as last, first, count, and, and a whole series of, um, of, of, of aggregation of summarization possibilities. Finally, there is a, a function called raw when you specifically do not want Wavefront to interpolate the data. So what it actually will do in the original example is only when the data is present in that particular time slice will Wavefront include it in the aggregation. So you could imagine the, all the asterisk would be gone and only the actual discrete dots would be included in the aggregation. So as I said before, you would basically see these dips. But sometimes that is actually what you want to look at, and you do not actually want Wavefront to be automatically interpolating the data. One other tidbit is also that Wavefront will only interpolate the data up to a day max. So if, there is, um, if the data actually stops reporting for a day, for certain operation, um, for example, like plus, there would be no interpolated points uh, for one side of the operand. Or if you're doing an aggregation function, that series would simply not be included as part of the aggregation. Hopefully that makes it a little clearer to you. Thank you.